everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tip Tuesday. Josh, you've been the fan favorite, man. Everybody <laughs> wants to see more Josh videos. Okay. So what I've talked him into doing is going over the in command system. I really had my first opportunity to start playing with the in command system last Saturday when we stayed over at the campground. It is easy to use, but there's a lot of features and stuff to it. Like, it can be really simple, or it can be fairly complex, right? This would go into tip Wednesday and Thursday if we went over everything that right. we do. Yeah. So, what I'm asking of you, if you don't mind, take these guys for a tour of the basics of in-command. Maybe talk about a couple of the things that we hear people most issues with. And I hate to word, use the word issues, but I can't think of another word. Like the passcode thing, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a nuance to it that maybe they can set up. But if you don't mind, lend your expertise to it, and I'll get out of the way. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, we'll move up here actually, so you can see the in command system. A couple of things we have. Like we said, this thing does everything, controls everything in here. The the basics, lights and and turning on your water heater and different things like that. Pretty much common sense stuff. You you can you can play around and find those. But the few things that we run into. Um, like you said, issues or I guess where people kind of tend to get tripped up a little bit and they call for advice, uh, there's a couple of real basic ones. So if we turn this on, first thing it asks you for is your passcode, right? So on these default, I think they're just four zeros to get into it. Now, let's say you're camping for a week or something, maybe even a little bit longer or even just the weekend. You come in here, turn lights on, you know, doing what you need to do inside. You get done, you want to turn the lights off, go back outside, hang out by the fire. You come back in to turn lights on and look for something else or maybe get a beverage out of the fridge. You got to put the passcode in every time. Kind of annoying to a lot of people. So there's actually an option. You can go into settings and if you go in here where it says passcode, it's going to ask you for it one more time. Put that in and now we have the option to change it, to clear it. You can reset all the settings default or this top one here, set timer. You can tell it just be off. And so now when we have this on here, we can go back home, we can turn this off. Now when we come in to get in the system, you turn this on, no passcode. Just comes on, ready to turn your lights on, do what you need to do. So the good thing about that is set that timer, have it off for the whole two weeks. When you're leaving and going back home or it's gonna go back in storage, or if you're gonna be gone, maybe you have a permanent setup and you're gonna be gone for the week and come back next weekend, Put it back on so that way people can't get into it and mess with the camper if they do get in there so just a nice feature you can turn that off so it's a little bit less of a, a nuisance for you every time you want to get in and out of the camper and do anything another thing that we run into on this it gets chilly at night right now springtime uh people want to turn their furnace on so you go to your your hvac system the first thing you see is, is front ac which is optional so if you have the second ac in the bedroom you would have some options here to to, to choose, uh, you know, for your fan mode, set your temperature and all that. But people want to turn their furnace on. Well, if you go through this, you have cool, fan, and off on this front AC. It doesn't have anything else. You actually have to go to the rear AC, which is weird because we're looking for furnace, but it's in the AC. So don't think of AC as just cooling. Think of it just as what it is, is air conditioning. We're going to condition the air warmer in here now. So it's in that same setting. So you go to rear and then your mode, you can go through and you'll see you have heat in there. Now you select gas and, and auto, which this one doesn't have any other kind of heat besides a gas furnace. So that's what you'd select, set your temperature, you're good to go. Another good thing about this, let's say, uh, let's say you're gonna be gone for the afternoon. Um, I don't know, going on a hiking trip or something or, or kayaking or something. You're gonna be gone all afternoon. You don't really need to to waste any energy conditioning the air the whole time you're gone unless you have pets or something you want to leave it on um but if you want it to just you know maintain a cooler temperature but then start to cool down even more whenever you're getting ready to come back so that you'll be ready to come in and relax you can actually go in and set a schedule now tricky thing is it looks like it's got a schedule set now but it doesn't that's actually not highlighted by default these are going to be set at at uh, midnight and midnight. So it's gonna be on at midnight, off midnight. So therefore it's, it's never gonna do anything because it's the exact same time. So you'd actually have to go into the time on the schedule and you would have to change the time. So we've already done this one, but you can see like we want it to start at, you know, well right now we're at 12.05 a.m. We want to start at 11.55 p.m. Let's say you wanted to do noon to three. You could set those times in there. And then when you get done and you're gonna go back to the home screen, it's gonna ask you to confirm it. So yeah, I wanna save those changes. 
Now to turn that schedule on, now when you push schedule, that'll actually highlight uh, just a slightly different color blue. And then you'll see your start and stop right. times that come on here. So you gotta remember you have that set though. You don't wanna be in the camper <laughs> using it, have a schedule set and all of a sudden your air conditioner goes off, you can't figure out what's going on. Well, it's because we have the schedule set. So you can just turn that back off and then it, then it could just run off of whatever you have it set on. So you would go to auto mode, which is gonna fluctuate between the air and the heat to keep it a certain temperature. Or, you know, we're gonna set it mode, uh, air conditioner or cool. We'll set our schedule. That's the time it's gonna come on. We're good to go. We can leave it, which now we've kicked it on. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And then we'll turn the schedule off too on this one so that, that in the showroom here, it's not just kicking on and off. So just, just a couple of little tips that, that people kind of get tripped up on because maybe you don't realize you've pushed the schedule or set the schedule time. Uh, another thing about this, if you go in, you'll notice there is also mode B. You can set two uh, different modes for this to kick on and off with your times on there. So in the evenings when it gets cool, you might want it to kick the furnace on. In the daytime when it's hot, kick the air conditioner on. You can play around with this. A lot of features. Like I said, it would take us all week to go through everything that this thing would do, but we'll uh, oh, cancel that. We don't want to set mode B. So just a few things that you can do with this. You can also control all of this with your mobile device, uh, your phone, uh, iPhone, Android, probably tablets um, that you have. All of this will connect just Bluetooth. But there's another feature that's built into these now that people are using. If we go to the home here, we'll go into settings. And if we scroll down, you'll see this global connect. As long as you have this symbol down here for global connect and it'll say it on here too. This can actually be controlled anywhere that you have data as long as you have Wi-Fi in the coach. So this one, I believe, is pre-wired for Wi-Fi somewhere that you could buy the, the add-on to have the Wi-Fi or 4G. Uh, so it'll have uh, data available in here. And then you can go into the Global Connect. You would have an account and password you set up on your mobile device that you're going to put in here to get in the settings. And then the rest of it you can most likely do from the phone. Some things you'll have to put in this so that it can remember, but most of it's going to be done on your phone. And then let's say you're, you're at home. Hey, we're getting ready to head to the campground. I'm going to go on my phone. I'm going to go ahead and turn my air conditioner on, get the thing cooling down. It'll be ready to go when I get there or fire up the water heater. Uh, so you'll have hot water when you get there. So lots of options with that that's built into some really cool features of the in-command system. Um, probably got one other thing that we can talk about that people call about a lot, uh, and that's what happens when this thing isn't functioning properly. I mean, we've seen screens go black before. Um, you know, it is, it is a, 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 a device built by people, so sometimes they mess up. So you have to have an option to be able to control things when the screen won't come up. And if you don't have the app on your phone, if you never set that up, now you, you, you're gonna feel like you have no option to close the slide so you can get this thing in for service. We actually have options for that, but we'll have to go out uh, to the front here where the main control box is for this. Okay, the other thing like I talked about is if, if that screen goes dark or something happens where that's not working, you can't control the slides, as long as they're electric slide outs. Now it won't control hydraulic ones. That one you'll have to do differently, which I believe I actually have a video on manually running in hydraulic slides out there. Um, but the electric slides on this thing, there is an option on this board, which normally this cover is gonna be on this, but it's just got one big thumb wheel you take off. And then you'll see this little rotating dial here that has off and then one, two, three, four, five, goes around there and then there's a button above it. So the way this works, the off position is going to be none of them. So if we hit this button, it doesn't do anything. M1, I think, believe it says M1, yeah, motor one. The way this starts is the driver's side, basically, or the off door side front is where the first one starts. So if you're standing there, the front end of your coach is up here, or pretend you're sitting in the driver's seat of your tow vehicle, right? Left side, very front thing is one. And it goes one, two, three, or all the way around in a counterclockwise fashion. So that front bedroom slide on this is going to be M1. So you put it on that, which you would just you would just select M1, and then you can hold this button. You kind of hear the slide running. It's going to run that slide out in. Now I don't want to run it too far because we probably have things in the way. But you know, of course, make sure everything's packed up. But 
So as you go, you have that slide, then the next button's gonna be the next slide. You're gonna come around to this slide. And then the only other two things on this is you have awnings. Now I've noticed on this one, they're backwards, uh, which one you would think would be first and second. Awnings, not such a big deal as long as you can run them in. But so you can run both awnings, all the slides on this unit in manually off of this to be able to, to pack it up and take it in for service so that we can get that in command fixed. Josh, <laughs> as always, that was a crap ton of information. That's a lot. I didn't even, I knew that in a pinch, I had this down here, but I didn't know exactly how it works. So it could be a guessing it. game. You just dial yeah, them you just in. Just dial and push, dial yeah. and push, dial and push. Well, it goes in order, so to help you. Guys, hopefully that was helpful. If you've got more questions about the end command, I'll pick this guy's brain all day long. Driving crazy, I enjoy it. Josh, thank you so much for participating. Hi, I'll see what kind of stuff I can get you into for next week. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, anybody needs anything in particular, leave a comment down below and we'll be sure to do it. And as always, thanks for watching.